Indeed. Um, I'm Jennifer Gibson, and I've been with Triad as Executive Director just since October. Uh, as Tanya says, I've, I've been um, involved in advocating for open research practices, policies, and systems for, for 17 years, and I've been tinkering with U.S. nonprofits uh, for the length of that time as well. I've um, I cast my remarks uh, it, it to, it, in light of Dryad's uh, experience to date. I, I said 13 years, going back to uh, 2009, but then I thought actually our platform first went online in 2008, but actually Dryad was first funded in 2007. So I think some of you have been watching Dryad all this time, so feel free to, to add details to our history as, a, as I, I try and catch up with it. I think it's really 15 years um, that, we're, that we're talking about at this stage. Um, before I, I speak about sustainability, uh, I, I want to revisit the, the message about Dryad. So um, it, many of you know Dryad as a, a digital repository, um, but I invite you now to, to think about us instead as an open data publishing platform whose job it is to help bring the data to life um, for the benefit of, of humans and, and machines that, that consume and, and use it. That's the power of open data sharing and given the maturity of the systems that we have available to us and that the technologies and tools, it's about time we started to, to take advantage. So I'm, I'm looking forward to Dryad contributing to that space as much as possible. Um, we're also a community, a multi-stakeholder community of, of researchers and, and journals, editors, publishers, um, academic institutions, and funders um, committed to a vision where uh, research data across disciplines is, is made openly available and routinely reused. So, so that's, that's where we're headed. The platform um, is for all research domains. So you may know that Dryad um, has strengths in evolutionary biology and ecology, which is our beginnings. Um, but we, we do want to be a home to everything. We've got strengths and weaknesses, uh, but we don't want, of course, the data that has a home in uh, the, 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 the CC with Ian <laughs> um, or with the other subject um, based depositories. You know, if you've got genome data, send it to the to the genome repository. If you've got protein data, send it to the protein repository. So so we're uh, a, a open publishing platform for data that doesn't have another home. Um, in fact, I, I kind of consider us an open data sharing um, entry strategy, you know, for, for disciplines that are mature with, with data sharing, they may have those, um, they probably have those repositories just for themselves and, and, and Dryad um, is a, a good place for people to put all the other data and maybe um, help those communities to gain footing and, and establish their own, their own systems in the future. We do only publish research data. So um, we, in the past, we did take supplementary information as well as software and other objects, but we found our niche with, with just the data. Uh, we do have a partnership with Zenodo um, in Switzerland, whereby researchers can deposit supplementary information in software through the same screens um, at Dryad whilst they, they publish their, their research data, but the, the stuff that, that we take in is, is just the data. Our process is fully curated. Uh, we have a, a team um, whose job it is to uh, interface with the authors to collect metadata um, necessary to uh, describe the, the data sets and facilitate discovery and, and reuse downstream. Um, they also do checks to make sure that uh, all the material can be shared under the CC0 license that is the, the Dryad default. So we, um, uh, we check to, to make sure licenses are compatible, but we also filter for a human subject identifiable information and endangered species uh, data. So we, uh, the location data, that, that stuff that, that we don't publish at Dryad. And uh, we are a not-for-profit organization. The platform today, um, or, or as of October anyway, um, uh, had over 43,000 data publications and a, a data publication can um, consist of uh, multiple data sets. So um, we don't only publish research in association with research articles, um, but, that, but we do support data deposition and publication in association with research articles, um, in which case a data publication um, is all of the, the data sets and, and, and software supplementary information and readme files in association with that publication. So, so it's a, a package of information. Those um, publications have been sent uh, to Dryad uh, through uh, 175,000 researchers, so all of the, the co-authors on, on the paper and, and the data set, uh, who are affiliated with over 32,000 institutions worldwide and 1,200 academic journals. 
as I, I speak about sustainability, um, I'm going to talk about the two facets uh, that uh, through, through which we think about data, a uh, story of sustainability, uh, and then to let you know where, where we're at. Uh, but first, I'm going to just offer a brief history of Dryad. And again, to, to those who have been with Dryad a little bit longer than I have, feel free and, and fill in some of the gaps for me. So again, going back to 2007, uh, Dryad was funded through uh, a grant from the US National Science Foundation, um, awarded to the National Evolutionary Synthesis Center, uh, affiliated with Duke and uh, UNC, University of North Carolina, and I think maybe also NC State, which I just picked up yesterday. In 2008, uh, the platform went live. Uh, 2010, um, it was decided that Dryad should uh, operate as a, a separate 501c3. Um, in 2011, uh, the, a number of journals uh, published editorials at the same time announcing the joint data archiving policy. So this is, this is important um, because, you know, as an open research advocate, I know how difficult it is to get faculty attention, to convince them to change their behaviors, or to, to move outside their, um, their critical path. And this movement came from within research. It was our, the colleagues in evolution and evolutionary biology who did the work to convince their colleagues of the importance. Of, of data sharing in their disciplines. And that's the foundation that we stand on today. So I'm very, very grateful um, to the, the work done, done then. Skipping ahead in time a little bit, um, another important milestone in the Dryad history is our partnership with California Digital Library. Um, uh, conceived in, in 2018. Um, that, through that partnership, which I'll describe in, in a moment, um, Dryad changed technology and moved on to uh, a data publishing form that the that CDL had designed and created. So we sh shifted over there and that gave us um and more flexibility, agility to, to develop more quickly. So after 2019, you can see a succession of uh, features um, and, and partnerships being added to the platform, including the Zenodo integration that, that I described just a moment ago. Um, and then uh, quickly after that, uh, it was announced that Dryad would be home to the, the data collected through the Atlantic Monthly Journal's um, COVID data tracking project. So that in my mind is an example of um, a uh, compelling example of data sharing, the importance of making data available for the, the benefit of, of future users and, um, and uh, future pandemics. So what, um, what I'd like you to, to take um, from this brief history is that Dryad's affiliation with academic institutions is part of our strength. Um, it is um, a collaboration that ensures that that dryad um, and the data that we publish persist. These are uh, memory institutions whose job it is to make sure that research data, uh, for example, is available in perpetuity. So that's a, a perspective that that gives a great great strength to to dryad. So um, now, as I, I talk about sustainability, uh, what I hope that you'll take away is that sustainability is a, a, co a combination of resourcing and stewardship together. I'm grateful to Ian for introducing the principles for open scholarly infrastructure, because I'm, I'm gonna, gonna go through that in a little bit of detail. The picture isn't complete uh, without one or the other. So first, uh, just briefly on resourcing, um, when we're thinking about resourcing at Dryad, we're thinking about it in three ways. So in the short term, what is the, the cash flow that we need to, to support ourselves, support the organization? In the midterm, um, what type of margin or surplus do we need to generate to reinvest into the organization to, uh, to grow and to innovate? And then the long term, again, back to that, that question of um, preserving the data uh, in, in perpetuity. What is our plan for 20 years time, 50 years time? And I'll go into the juicy bits of exactly who supports Dryad in, in just a moment. First on stewardship, again, going back to the, the principles of open scholarly uh, infrastructure, uh, Dryad was an early adopter of the principles um, uh, because it's, it's important. We think that all these questions, not just sustainability, financial sustainability, are important uh, when we consider the, the longevity of projects, but also um, how to invest funds. So uh, uh, libraries as investors and funders uh, as investors uh, want to consider the, uh, the, the strengths and longevity of the projects that they're investing in. So these considerations, these principles are, are very, very important. So on um, uh, governance, the principles take into account things like uh, whether 
the resource is broadly representative of the global research enterprise, whether stakeholders are involved in governance and uh, whether membership is non-discriminatory and inclusive, there aren't any barriers to different communities participating. So um, these are signals of, of strong governance with respect to sustainability. Uh, Ian covered this, uh, that, that time-limited funds are used for a time-limited purpose, that a surplus is generated um, in order to be reinvested into, into the business, and that there is a contingency for, uh, uh, for long-term planning. On insurance, this is a, a really important addition uh, to the mix uh, because it helps providers and investors know that uh, that these resources will persist. So there are principles around the, the data being uh, made open uh, for, for harvesting and, and preservation, but also the software behind the, the platform. And there's a, a patent non-assertion clause as well. So um, now, if this is the first time that you've heard about Posey, I hope that you'll, that you'll take a look. It's... Um, uh, inspirational, I think, and also uh, provides a, a number of important markers to help inform conversations around sustainability, long-term sustainability of, of resources like the ones we're exploring today. Again, I'll, I'll go through this in a little bit more detail in, in just a moment. Um, but now going back to the to the question of resourcing, where how how is is dryad resourced? So um, as you know from the brief history I shared just a moment ago, the picture has has changed quite a bit in nearly 15 years. Um, and today we have a, a rich and robust uh, resourcing profile that I'm grateful for as the, the new executive director coming in just a, just a few months ago. We have six types of investor and customer. The California Digital Library I partnered with Dryad in 2018 as an open data publishing resource to their faculty, uh, which uh, by virtue of their investment is now available to any academic institution. So this is a familiar story. You know, the university uh, wanted uh, the, the data and to help uh, the faculty to, to share their data and to make it available for the campus. A uh, familiar story. They weren't able to get the type of engagement from the faculty that they aspired to. A dryad came up a lot in terms of where faculty were already sending their data and so they engineered a partnership where they would provide uh, support, um, technological support, uh, uh, and, uh, and dryad would carry in running, running the business. So, um, and then by virtue, well, I'll talk about the institutional membership program in, in just a moment. So the partnership continues and, and CDL significant resources uh, keep an eye on our stack. So they, they, they run our technology and make sure that the, the servers are, are up to date and, and secure at all times. Um, and they also help to keep us at the forefront of a vibrant and, and changing scene in research data management and sharing, more specifically product management and, uh, and Dan Daniela Lowenberg, whom many, many of you know from, from many different circles. So they help us to, to to keep abreast of, of uh, busy conversations in, in research data. Our institutional membership program um, is a system where, whereby uh, libraries, um, but not exclusively libraries, any agency on campus, including research um, management offices, uh, research integrity offices, IT services, invest in uh, membership at Dryad. And they do that for a number of reasons. One uh, main reason is to capture the, the, the flow of data. So um, researchers have the habit in many disciplines of, of, of sending data to Dryad. We've got a partnership with publishers that I'll describe in a, in a moment to, um, to, uh, to mean that Dryad is a, a really strong focal point for data sharing in, in many disciplines. So as I said a moment ago, the institutions want that data and through their, their membership with Dryad, they can have it. Um, we send it over to them via our, our API. So they can have the metadata to stick in their catalogs, or they can have all the research data for their institution, or they can have the whole darn thing through the membership um, they, and the CC0 license. Um, they can take all the, the Dryad data into their system. So it's a win-win in, in that way. And a lot of institutions are investing in Dryad also because they want to support open infrastructure in line with the, the, the POSI principles. So it's a, a great collaboration there. Um, I didn't bring specific numbers um, with me today, but I'm happy to answer any questions. Um, in terms of our non-grant revenue, um, the institutional membership program is one third of that stream. Our second uh, non-grant revenue stream is a uh, deposition by individual researchers. So they pay a uh, data public publication charge um, to share their data when they're not coming in in association with a, a, a campus or library. And then the third um, uh, 
of our third non-grant revenue stream is our connection with the publishers. So um, individual journals and and other and, and bigger publishing organizations uh, partner with Dryad so that they can uh, send their their researchers to Dryad to publish their data as part of the submission and publication stream. So that's that's a very very important, really really powerful moment to be to be catching the data. We also. Um, have a grants uh, of two types. So long-term grants, um, a Dryad is a fairly unique position in that the um, NSF has invested in Dryad by a sustaining award, I think for five or six years, I think we're on our second um, uh, uh, sustaining award. Um, and we're now the recipient of the um, an, an other transaction via the National Institutes of Health in association with Generalist Repository Ecosystem Initiative. So these are, these are large longer term grants that go to support Dryad's ongoing operations. Um, these, are, these are important and, and the grants that we feel are quite proud of because a Dryad has come to be a, a resource for the community that the funders don't want to go away. So they've given us these, these long-term long -term grants. Um, at the same time, we do have short-term grants uh, like through the Alfred um, P. Sloan Foundation that, um, that helped us to, to engineer the Zenodo partnership. Um, the, the point that I hope you'll take away from that is that you know, Dryad is community um, engineered, community driven, community designed, and remains community supported. It's a very important um, uh, uh, feeling, spirit that drives uh, how we operate. Going back to POSI, um, the principles for open scholarly infrastructure, it invites you to audit yourselves uh, against each of the, the principles. Um, Dryad has done quite well so far. It's something that we need to make sure and revisit to make uh, to see that our decisions aren't taking us away from, um, from these principles. But in the first audit that we did in December 2020, we were doing quite well, uh, except for with respect to generating a, a surplus or, or contingency fund. And we um, are not quite at the, the, the goals there. Um, it needs a bit of attention. It'll be the focus of my attention once I have my first uh, year's budget as the new executive director. So I'll be happy to speak to that in more detail in the future. Looking ahead, I'll, I'll just say um, five uh, quick things. Uh, I can't speak to the next 15 years, um, but I can give a sense of what I, I hope will happen in, in the, the next few years. Um, I feel that there's an opportunity to optimize what we do um, and to leverage our experience in open publishing innovation to take Dryad into the next stage and begin to achieve what I, what I began to speak about at the top, about uh, facilitating reuse by humans and machines and helping to bring data to life and, and make it a first class citizen in research communication and also research assessment. Uh, another thing uh, I expect to happen quite quickly, and a, a reason why I'm, I'm glad that we're a part of this conversation today with, with Phoenix, um, is that there are a lot of opportunities to expand. So uh, not just with, with data sharing and tapping into data sharing policies, but also growing interest in, in curation um, and membership by institutions, um, data sharing by, by publishers. Um, it's really uh, really across the board. In parallel, uh, I want to continue to collaborate um, in the ways that I've, I've said already to, with institutions and, and, and with organizations uh, that are aligned with us. But also I'm really interested in, in an idea that, um, that colleagues, uh, Raym Crow, Kristen Rattan and Dan Whaley have put forward to say that um, uh, we have the potential to create a portfolio of services like Dryad that are complementary and whose values and, and missions are aligned and present them together to institutions and funders um, in a way that's easier for them to decide where to invest in. Because if, if all of us are going to these investors separately, it's a lot of overhead, both for us and for them. The challenge is, is, is finding uh, alignment and, and complementary services. And then finally, Concluding point, Tanya, um, I'm really interested um, in what role a dryad may play in helping to redefine the dynamics of scholarly communication and infrastructure in a way that helps to avoid the problems that we've encountered to date um, in terms of kind of investment and, and, and resources and, 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 and margins and, and where the money goes and also advances ideas like value-based decision-making. What I presented here, I think, um, says to me that Dryad is on the right track, is already a trusted resource and collaborator to the, to the research community. I hope that you agree and uh, I look forward to, to the discussion later today. Thanks again for, for having me.